Hal Moore has achieved what few ever will, a lifelong career in radio. That's because he didn't listen to his mother. I grew up in Fort Madison, Iowa, which is in southeast Iowa. My mother worked at the radio station. I wrote this thing on Lou Gehrig, and it was ridiculous, but I ended up winning the state speech contest in radio speaking. So I came to my mom and said, hey, you know, I really think I'd like to uh, work at the radio station. And she said, don't do it. The worst people in the world are in radio. She said, you could be somebody. <laughs> he wanted to come to Denver to go to work for KBTR. Then Ken Palmer stepped into his life. I understand you've been out here to KBTR. We want to talk to you. We've always been interested in you. I said, oh, come on. You, haven't been in you don't even know who I am. And he said, oh, yeah, listen to this. And he played a tape of me. And I remember him telling me, you know, he said, I'm going to tell you something, you could go to KBHR and you'll probably do very well, but we'll, we'll beat you. Somehow I'll beat you, you know? But if you come to Kim, you could be one of the top jocks in the country. What are now baby boomers who grew up in Denver knew him as Hal Baby Moore. He was also Kim's music director. Hi, and a good evening to you, everybody. It's old Hal Baby going around till midnight tonight, sitting in on the Hal Moore Show from 7 till 9. And would you believe that we're sitting in for Bill Holly from 9 to midnight? All in all, it's five hours of fun from Big Boss Radio 1. And tonight... Uh, on the KIMN was number one longer than any other independent station in American radio history. Kim was legendary around the country. I mean, it was just probably one of the top ten stations, I would think, in rock. And to have a chance to come to... 95 Fabulous Kim and do 6 till 9 at night when I was 24, 25 years old was, that was like dying and going to heaven. For me, it was just, it couldn't have been better. I got a chance to go to Cleveland. So I went to WHK, but I wasn't there very long before I got a chance to go to WKYC in Cleveland, which was a 50,000 watt NBC o &L. So I got called to active duty in the National Guard. I don't know if you all remember the Pueblo crisis. So I went from program director of WKYC in Cleveland to company clerk in Fort Benning, Georgia in a period of 30 days. If you've been called active duty, it's a requirement that they take you back. So they had already had a program director at KY since I left. My wife, I said, what do you think? And she said, God, please. I said, if you had anything, if you had your choice, what would you do? She said, I would go back to Denver. 630 K-H-O-W. I called Hal Davis and I said, uh, Hal, this is uh, Hal Moore. I used to work. I, I know who you are. And I said, well, I'm looking for a job. He said, um, I'll have a plane ticket for you out at the airport. k -W was just a crazy place when I first went there. It was in complete and total disarray. And for somebody like me, it was perfect, you know, because I could see the potential there. So they made me the program director and I was started off doing afternoon drive. The ratings in the morning show started to go down and so they called me in and they said we're thinking about putting you in with Charlie because Charlie and I were doing a lot of appearances in the evening at clubs and stuff and we had a great rapport with each other. Hal and Charlie! It's John Fogarty and uh, don't mess with my tutu. <laughs> Don't mess with my tutu. Okay, John. <laughs> John's all right. Right, you are. You and uh, you and my wife went to uh, junior high school in uh, junior high school together in Des Moines. What was that? Warren G. Harding Junior Warren High G. School. Warren G. Harding Junior High. The Fighting Eskimos. We were the Fighting Eskimos. It was the most fun you can imagine having. Really, it was great. Wonderful weekend in the West. We did every Friday at five ten. I want your stomach in. I want your chest out. I want your hand over your heart, and I want you to face those purple mountain majesties. Because this is the time when each and every one of us stop and realize that we are some of the luckiest people in the world. Because we have the opportunity to live in this, the greatest state in the Union, Colorado! We all had so much pride in Denver. And, and we didn't come to Denver to have a job. We came in Denver to live. And this is... And, and you wanted to constantly, it's a good thing to remind people why they're there. To say, you know, you're here because this is the greatest place in the world you can be, you know. The ratings were fabulous and, you know, and I just sort of belted out, I love you, Denver. And I thought, hey, maybe, maybe that is something. And that was something that just was spontaneous with me. When I signed off my show, I was just feeling that, you know. And people still obviously remember it. The highlight of my life has been KHAL.
I was there for 27 years. He has stayed on the Denver Airwaves and recently returned to Denver 95, the old KIMN frequency. How baby more and the best and most goldies as you cruise into work with cruising oldies 950. I love the music so much, that's me. I think I'm so fortunate to be as old as I am and to be able to play that music and, uh, and to still be involved in. The listeners are very responsive. You know, I think, God, I, I'm one of the luckiest people. And the fun that I've had, you know, I could not, how could you ask for, you know, I don't think you could ask for anything more. The broadcast professionals of Colorado proudly welcome Hal Moore into the 2010 BPC Hall of Fame.